Hi everyone, how are you today? It's Sharon here from I Restore Stuff, the blog, and I'm so excited to be here as one of Essential Stencils Ambassadors to show you another DIY project live. So let me know as you join where you're tuning in from, where you're watching from, if you're watching the replay. Don't forget to comment the word replay within the 24 hours after we go live, and you can tell that by the little date stamp up the top there, uh, the timestamp to see when we went live. So, hey Nancy, how are you? The first name that I see this morning. And don't forget, if you are joining me live, we have prizes right here at Essential Stencil, giveaways at the end of our live every time. You see ambassadors here. Um, Essential Stencil are so generous. Now, if you see behind me, I've got the Stencil of the Month Club on the big screen right here to show you that in a minute. But um, as you're joining, hi Cheryl, hi Pat, hi Laurie. Let me know, have you received or have you ordered, pre-ordered, no, you haven't received it yet. <laughs> have you pre-ordered the any of the Christmas um, winter stencils, the new release Christmas winter stencils? Let me show you just some of those while we're waiting for people to join in. Hello, Gretchen. Hello, Mary. How are you all today? Um, some of the minis and some of the mini tags. Let's just have a look at some of those. Now, you've probably seen some on the website already. If you haven't, there is still time I think I saw another five days to get your pre-order in. There is a bundle which comes down at a discount rate. Then if you add my code, I restore stuff, you get a further 10% off. So don't forget to use my code, I restore stuff. Um, when ordering any of the winter collection, especially that bundle, you get a further 10% off. So here are some of the mini tags. These are great for Christmas tags. They have little puns on them. Oh, I have to get my glasses to make sure I'm saying them right. But things like um, wishing you a chocolate of holiday cheer. Have a poppin' Christmas with popcorn. So, you know, you could make little gifts, um, jars, and hang these as gift tags on them. Special delivery, great little Christmas gift tags, Christmas treat for someone uh, special, someone sweet, sorry. Uh, then there's these cute gnome tags, so they're gorgeous. So some of the wooden tags that Essential Stencil stocks. Did you know that you can use my code iRestoreStuff and get 10% off these wooden tags? They come in a set of three, and those are the tags that are especially these are designed for. So that's a lot of fun. Hello, Whimsically Knotted is here. You ordered your bundle at midnight when they released. Yeah, some people are keen. They wait up till midnight to get that release and make sure you get in because some of the designs are starting to dwindle down to low numbers because some people aren't buying the bundle, they're buying separate um, stencils, which is fine too, but there are some that are getting, um, that are running low. So there's these gorgeous baubles for the Christmas tree, uh, some cute winter sayings and signs for Hello Winter, uh, December 25th with some gorgeous Christmas fun signs and stencils there. And these are just the minis that I'm showing you right now, but we are going to get stuck into a couple of the stencil designs. I'm using two sets from the latest collection. I love this nativity set. This one's beautiful. Um, these are just the uh, six by six inch minis. And someone mentioned this on the stencil of the month club just before when I saw that on Facebook in the Facebook group saying, um, is anyone going to be doing the penguins? I can't wait to see what you guys do with that. Speaking of, oh, hang on, this is cute. This is the large wooden tag size, and so Essential Stencil has large wooden tags as well. I saw Amanda do this tree. No, was it Melissa? Melissa did these trees this week. Some gorgeous fun things. I love the Candy Cane Lane, Wonderland, and Gingerbread Street. So the street signs that you can pop up in your street. So many, so many stencils. Lots of, um, you can just see the W-E, we, but it's welcome. A Christmas welcome sign for porch leaners. So beautiful arrangement of porch leaners. Uh, I saw this is the one Amanda did this week on her live. So if you missed that, go catch that one. Feliz Navidad. There's another porch leaner. Christmas trees, woodland. Merry Christmas signs, believe in the magic of Christmas, and Santa's workshop. Those are gorgeous. I just love that font, that vintage style. Makes some beautiful signs there. And then <clears throat> that brings me to the stencils that I'll be using on today's live. 
Let me show you what I'm working on first. And as you can see, I've divided it off. And I've, I've seen people do these um, round stencils with half things here and half there. I think Melissa's done one before and I've seen lots of them on Pinterest. So I thought I'd give that a go today using just a cutting board. So this is a round cutting board. I did measure it and I do have a list of all the things I used today on in the description of the live so you can go and check that up later. Um, check that out later. So I'm going to be using this argyle pattern today on today's live. <coughs> Yes, Dominica is saying that the fonts are beautiful. They are. There's so many beautiful fonts there. Hi, Mary Jo. How are you? Jacqueline's here. <laughs> and this is the Seasons Greetings stencils set. So I'll be using this one today. Let me show you what else we've got in, this, in the set. So this is a three pack and they're large 12 by 12 stencils. My favorite color is Christmas lights. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, you could just use the lights there to create a banner or uh, some kind of border on another Christmas sign. You don't have to have this sign here. We love to mix and match, match things here. Um, I do anyway, <laughs> joyful, merry and blessed. And again, we've got some gorgeous holly leaves around and a cute little bow at the bottom. But see how you can use that as almost like a wreath or a border for a different sign. So switch these words out and put something else in there, a different Merry Christmas or something from the nativity set. Just mix and match your stencils. There's lots of creative ways to do that. So I'll be showing you how to use the Argyle pattern set, which is a two part set. It comes with the diamond shapes and then these little crisscross diamonds that go over the top of it. All right, so essential stencils just popped up on there. Only six days left and I can't see the rest of it, but I know that there's six days left for the stencil of the month club set. Now that's up here on my screen here. Let me just show you across. So we've got a little snowman, um, the uh, nice beautiful sayings, happy holidays, believe in the magic and Christmas. And we've got Christmas trees. We've also got this, um, the wording across here, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I think that would look great as a, a um, let me see if I can click across. Yes, you can. As a wallpaper or a wrapping paper, you can do that as, I don't know if you can see this as well, but um, this is the October add-on. Okay, so this is October set. The add-on is a Santa Claus and a reindeer so to make some cute signs there. So there's some fun ways that you can do that. Happy holidays with the Merry Christmas background. Uh, so that's all on the stencilofthemonthclub.com, which um, Essential Stencil will put the link in there for too. But there's only six days left till you can jump in on that one. Don't forget to get the add on because that's fun too. I will point the camera down here and there's only, I think it's five days left. Let me just look because I did look it up. My little, the little counter at the top says five days and three hours left to get that winter collection bundle to get your pre-orders in for that. Otherwise, they will still be available on the website, but there will be, it won't be at that bundle sale price. Okay. So let me see if I can find our live here so I can catch your comments as I'm going. There we go. Scarlett says, Christmas is my favorite. I love the stencils too. All right, let's jump in and do something creative here. This morning, well, I say this morning, it's night time for you guys. I'm here in Australia and uh, it's moving on to spring here in Australia. Don't forget, I've got my little sign here. Use I Restore Stuff as the code for getting 10% off all your essential stencil products. And that includes the brushes, okay? So brushes come in a set of four, four different sizes. <clears throat> it often helps to have a couple of sets on the go so that um, if you, you know, using different colors, you don't have to chop and change them all the time. All right, you can see I've got a piece of blue painter's tape across there. Now I did measure this. I think it was a 14 inch board, yeah. Oh, maybe 15, sorry. 12, 13, yeah, it's nearly 15 and a half, 15 three quarter inch diameter board. Now I've, um, you can see, I don't know if you can tell that the tape is just slightly up this way. And so I'm going to do the argyle pattern down here on the bottom. And the, the stencil is actually not as wide as my board, so I'm going to have to repeat the pattern. So let me show you. This is the side that we're going to put down first. 
and this is the side, the stencil that we're going to put down second, and we have little markers here to mark where our stencil fits over the top of this pattern here. So let me put this down so you can see that against the black. So when we're putting this stencil down on top of it, it lines up with the diamond shapes right here. Okay, so oops, there we go. The light was shining on that. So we've got markers to line them up. So let's go ahead with the first one. <clears throat> and if you're worried about lining it up right, practice on a piece of cardboard or cardstock first. Hi Janice from Georgia. Hi Rhonda, how are you going? Cindy says it's 8.10 p.m. there. Oh well it's 10.10 a.m. here on Thursday morning. So if you haven't had a Thursday, you're still on Wednesday, I'm letting you know Thursday's looking great, guys, here in sunny Australia. Oh, look, so I could uh, just make my diamonds go. Ooh. Um, I'm thinking I might just set it so that point of the diamond is down there and then my... <coughs> Let me just zoom in. <laughs> And then, so that I don't have these little diamond peaks showing here, if I put that right on the line, and this is almost at the edge here, so if I put my diamonds right on the line, then I don't have to worry about um, you know, going over the top. It's just going to line up exactly on my piece of tape. So I'm going to go in the center, and then I'm going to do the sides after that. So I am going to do the Christmas colours. I did see that Renee had done something with the Argyle pattern on her page this week, and so that is amazing, that's fantastic. And she didn't go with the whole Christmas theme, so there is so much you can do with this. The other thought is that there are some other colours that I've seen that look great at Christmas time, including that, um, I want to say pastel pink kind of colours and tones shiny, shimmery pink, metallic pink, I don't know, um, that look fun for Christmas time. Okay, so I've got some little pieces of scrap cardboard here that I can offload on. I will get my painter's tape and tape this down. So, oops, I'm trying to put this in the wrong way. Maybe I can zoom down a little bit more. <coughs> okay, so we're using some painter's tape to just hold this down. So I've lined up that the tips of the diamonds of the argyle pattern are just and on the edge of my blue tape that way. Whoop. Now I've shifted it right away. And I've centered that center diamond to the bottom there. <coughs> okay, so just gonna tape a little bit here and a little bit here, making sure we're all still lined up and then I'll do the sides in a minute. I'm going to grab, so the diamond's a fairly large shape. I think I'll go with this three quarter, um, three quarter inch size brush. Now the Essential Stencil brushes are available on the website. You can use my code, I Restore Stuff, for brushes as well, anything and everything. Now I've just blobbed my red paint in there. I am using Fusion Mineral Paints Cranberry color, which is a gorgeous color. And I do have an affiliate link for Fusion Mineral Paint if anyone would like that we can pop that there in the comments just let me know and what I do is I just offload the brush you see that I did wipe it I did wipe it now I'm going in for a bit more I wiped it on the edge of the pot oops now you can't see let me just move this across but <clears throat> all I'm doing is offloading that onto the cardboard to remove most of the paint from the bristles of the brush so if you're new to stenciling Please let us know. If you've never stenciled before, let us know that. Um, some people are nervous to stencil. Cindy says, I've always been nervous to use two-step stencils. Well, here you go. I'm showing you how to do that today. So we're going to just use a swirly method. See, I may not have enough on my brush, but that's okay because I think, I feel like, I'm just going to dip this in a little bit of water. See, as um, acrylic paint has been left for yonks and uh, yonks, I don't know if that's just an Australianism, but lots of, a long time. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit of water because I feel like it's really, really super thick. And sometimes that will not give you a nice even finish. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm sort of mixing. I just dipped my brush in a teensy bit of water wiped it off and now I'm adding, just mixing it around in the paint. 
because I've let there's hardly anything in the jar and once you have a jar of paint that's got too much air in it that air starts to dry out the rest of the paint so it is getting a little bit gluggy. And some people might throw this out but I think it's perfect for stenciling because it's um you know you're just dipping your brush in that end of it it's not like it has to be nice smooth paint for furniture or something which is what I do I paint furniture and home decor so Becky says you have stencils but you've not used them yet you're just not sure if you can do it as beautiful as you guys do oh Becky you can do it let's encourage Becky and others like her who feel really scared about stenciling you can do it just practice on a piece of cardboard first Oops, I, yeah, I'm a lot more happier with the way, way that that's coming out. Now I did paint this uh, white background as you can see and I left the edges of my board raw. I don't know if you can see that there. Let me just see how they're... Oh, you can't see really. It looks very light, but it's a light pine kind of colour. Um, yeah, just practice, Becky, on some cardboard or a piece of paper first until you're comfortable with the amount of... It's all about getting the right amount of paint on your brush, I think. And so this is kind of looking a little bit swirly and swishy. I can see paint strokes because I'm using red on a white. And the red is quite, um, it's sort of a bit translucent. It's not got as great a coverage as some of the other colours. And that sometimes happens when there's, um, to do with the pigment in the paint that they've had to use so I will do two coats of this just to give it a nice solid look so while we're just doing our one coat here um, you can sort of see that it's not as good a coverage as it would if we have a second coat <coughs> oh good on you guys look at you all being really encouraging yes get them out get them dirty <laughs> it is so much fun Bronwyn says just have a basically a dry brush exactly so you you put some paint on your brush then you offload the paint as much as you can until the paint brush is almost dry and then I give it a, a good old swirl see you might be tempted I'm going to show you this up close because you can see how you can still see the swirl marks and things there that just means that the paint is very um, the, you know, if I'm doing furniture or painting a piece of furniture, that first coat is what we call the ugly stage. It always looks really like, oh, I've done this just a terrible job of painting. But it's only because it's just you've just used one coat of paint and you just need to use a couple of coats. So, but when you're stenciling, the temptation is to go, oh, it looks like I can still see the whiteness through that red. You know, it's got, got a bit streaky. I should put some more paint on my brush. The answer is no, don't do it. Don't be tempted to put more paint on your brush because if you put too much paint on your brush, what happens is it bleeds underneath the stencil and you get the fuzzy edges and it's sort of, it's almost like it's, well, that's what, you, it sort of leaks out underneath the stencil. I've got some little paint lumps on here now. Um, so it's a much better idea to use two coats do two different coats rather than try and get too much on your brush and risk all those um, furry edges fluffy edges so we're almost finished that little part there then we'll move it along and for our second coat we'll just bring it right back where it was now on the edges here because this is raw timber on the edges I just left that I didn't paint it white I'm thinking of doing a stain there or maybe even edging it with a metallic type of paint. Okay, so I'm going to lift that up because when I do my second coat, I can always just put it exactly where I dropped it down. So there's our first coat there and I'll show you. See this first, very first square I did is a lot more solid because I've kind of got, it was thicker paint then. I kind of thinned it out a little bit, but I'll just do two coats and it'll be fine. <clears throat> okay, so to line up my second little area here, cardboard ready. I don't want to put that tape on some red paint that I've just done but I want to line up. See how I'm lining up these this end diamonds with those diamonds that already are there. This one. So 
I'm going to get it in the right place. I'm actually taping the tape down on my cardboard that I've got on the table. But I just want to make sure I'm not going to put that paint, uh, this tape on the red paint, okay, because it's still drying. There's just a little bit there, but it's kind of lifted up. Okay, so now I can see that I haven't finished this one properly. <coughs> Keeping it really still, offloading a bit more paint on the brush. And I go ahead and do this other edge over here. Don't forget guys, if you are watching the replay, or if even if you're here watching the live and you want to watch the replay again, you can get a chance at winning prizes by commenting the word replay um, in that 24 hours after the live is finished. For those of you who are watching live right now, I hope you'll stay tuned. There's a chance to win prizes. Join in the conversation. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to share. Uh, let's sprinkle the love around Facebook land and... Let others know that you're watching us live here. You just hit that little button and sprinkle away. All right, we're doing it again over this side now. That first, um, the first part that I did is, is almost dry. Fusion is very, I'm just going to pop that down there. There's a little bit that way. Um, Fusion dries very quickly. Oh, thank you, Cherie. She said she shared our live just now. It's very easy to do. Thank you so much. Yes, Erin, the brushes make a huge difference. The essential stencil brushes, everybody raves about these. They love using them. Um, oh, got any little lumps on my brush there. Dipping it in the paint again. Offloading that as much as I can on the cardboard. Don't forget those little bits that you can just see over the end because then it makes the pattern looks like it's continuing on after it reaches the edge. So it gives it a bit, of a, a bit more of a finished look. Okay, so there we go. We can see that that's nearly done there. Now I'm going to just do a quick hair dryer moment here to just make sure that's completely dry especially in this center part where I started so that I can add my second coat down there and it gives it a nice solid look okay. now for the second part to these stencils is that little thin line that you see on that um, Oh, okay. There's a suggestion there to do a second coat on some other random diamonds to give it some dimension. Oh, you could do that too. So I'm just going to pop this right over where I started and exactly in the same spot to give it that second coat. Okay, so getting our paint on our brush again, <coughs> offloading it. And now it should be dry enough to just do a super quick swirly whirl. And I don't even mind if it's a bit rough and ready because I do love that vintage style. Uh, almost like a worn, worn look. I just didn't want it to look too swirly. So this second coat is just going to go on so much faster than that first coat. And then we get to put on that second pattern. This part is the second layer to the Argyle pattern. Guys, I haven't practiced this. As often is the case. <laughs> I literally received my stencils, I think it was yesterday or the day before. I haven't had time to practice. I love winging it with you guys. You know what? This is just the best community. You guys who uh, join into our lives and join in the comments are always so encouraging and always also full of inspirational ideas, I find. And so it is with the, it's also the same way with the Stencil of the Month Club. 
<coughs> the Facebook group that you get to join once you join the Stencil of the Month Club is um, so much fun, so much inspiration there, lots of people um, sharing their projects of things that, you know, some things that you never would have thought of in using different stencil combinations together and all of that kind of thing. So if you are thinking about joining the Stencil of the Month Club, now is a good time. You can use my code iRestoreStuff and get 50% off your first month. And I just showed you, if you missed the beginning of the live, I've got on the TV screen behind me the Stencil of the Month Club set for October. You've got another six days and you can jump in on that. That's it. Now, Stencil of the Month Club, they deliver to your door a set of three stencils every month. Plus, if you opt in to their add-on, you get that one as well. So at the beginning of this live, I was showing on the screen behind me the set. It's Christmas themed for the Stencil of the Month Club. Um, this month, little Santa Claus, Christmas tree, Christmas themed, beautiful Merry Christmas words, um, you know, that create a beautiful background or wrapping paper. Speaking of wrapping paper, this argyle pattern would make great wrapping paper or, you know, the bottom of a gift bag. If you just, I've often made gift bags with, um, you know, the brown paper gift bags, just popping a beautiful pattern or something on that would look great. Now you can see that has made such a difference. I'll show you the um, two coats compared to the one coat on these few at the end here that only have one coat. They're a lot lighter and that's really created a much more solid look on these. Now you could just leave that red checkered, not checkered, diamond pattern if you wanted to just like it is but we will be adding the extra little stripe that comes with this as a two-part set because I think it's so fun. I need to add a little more. And then we'll be adding some words up the top here. See how that second coat just comes on super quick. Mary's asking, how do I join the Stencil of the Month Club? You just go to stencilofthemonthclub.com and you can sign up right there, Mary. And use my code, iRestoreStuff, to get your 50% off your first month. Um, you can also have access to the Stencil of the Month Club shop, which will, um, there's just some beautiful stencils that are exclusive there to uh, club members. Oops, I'm trying to line up my <laughs> stencil here. I'm not sure where I'm going. But yeah, that's, that's all you have to do, stencilofthemonthclub.com. Um, Essential Stencil will probably put the link there for you. But it's 50% off your first month using my code iRestoreStuff. So thanks for asking, Mary. Great question. Yes, Cindy, now you know how to use up your sample jars of your fusion mineral paint. Exactly. They're perfect for stenciling. And these stenciling brushes are great for um, fitting in to those little tester jars. Okay. There we go. So we've done our first, coat, our first layer of the two-part layer for the Argyle set. So um, as you can see, this would be a great all over pattern for that as well. <coughs> now comes our second part. So we've got that part there. So I will be putting um, some wording up the top here. Oh, now here's a thought. I think I'll go with the black, but let me, you could also do like a metallic for this part, or you could do a green. So imagine that in like a dark green, color these lines okay so now we have to get where to where we were now then now that I haven't oh no I can still do that I've got that here let me see where it lines up so now we want to line up our stencil where those little markings are on our pattern and you will probably I'm thinking I'm gonna have to tape those off so here is where it has to be first of all I've got to get my lining up 
of my pattern where it was here. Put this one exactly on top, lining up your four markers on the end there to exactly where the stencil was. Who thinks this one might be just slightly a little bit easier than the leopard print? That leopard print one was fantastic too. I love it. But sometimes they um, can seem a little bit tricky. But even with the leopard print, I did do a little uh, demo on my Facebook page of how to do that. I'm just going to pop this brush into a plastic bag to stop it drying out in case I want to use red again for something else. But I'm going to do this a different colour. Now, watching carefully, we're going to pull out our bottom diamonds because we don't want to do that and just going to pop a little bit of tape over those. Don't forget to pop a little bit of tape. I don't need to put it on these two markers but on those marking points don't forget to tape over them because you don't want the second colour to go on your diamonds. Mine are just showing through a little bit down the bottom there but these ones are above that blue line so I don't need to worry about these. So that's where we're going to do our second colour. Oh guys, I really think I'm tempted to try this vintage gold on that part. You know, I can always go over with the black if it doesn't stand out as much, can't I? So let's flip my cardboard over. <coughs> yes, yeah, so that's the colour cranberry. Cheryl does agree. The leopard was tricky, but it's still so effective. It looks amazing. So I really would encourage you to give it a go. Uh, if you're new to stenciling, you know, start out with some of the easier stencils, like some of the word stencils to make signs. But yes, definitely it's not too hard. And that's why we do these tutorials, is to help you uh, learn how to do all the tricky ones too. All right, so this is another fusion paint. You can use any metallic. It's called Vintage Gold. And I've got an affiliate link if you want to use that for Fusion Mineral Paint. Please ask and I'll send it. Um, I'll answer you after if, if Essential Stencil doesn't have that handy. So I'm offloading that as well, my vintage gold. And I can always go over this with, with black because red and black, I love that. That You could also do red and green. But so many other combinations of colours that you could do with this set. So here we go. I've used the tiniest. So this is the half inch, um, the half inch brush. So this one reaches right up to the blue line here that I've taped off. And we may have to do a second coat on this. If it doesn't um, turn out as dark as I'd like it, I'll give it a second coat, but I can always go over it with black to just kind of give it a bit more of a standout feature. I have to use my eyes carefully because it's such thin lines. I'm like, where have I done and where haven't I done? is probably a little bit quicker doing this these lines because it's not as not got as much to cover as you do with the diamonds. And again, just making sure you have very little paint on your brush. If I've got too much paint on, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now just sort of going, you know, using the brush in a swirly motion and so on. I think that on the red color it may need a couple of coats because it's, I can still see the red through there. I'm excited to see how this turns out too. <laughs> I know you guys are probably all like, oh wow, I can't wait to see how this, me too. I haven't even tried it. <laughs> I haven't even practiced to give it a go. But I do like the way we've got these markers on the side to kind of line that up. See if we need a second coat. I'm thinking we might. Black you may not if I was using black as a as a contrasting colour. But um, the gold, some of the metallic colours, and, and I don't think it matters what paint brand you use, some of the metallic colours um, 
you do need a second coat on those. Now my tip doesn't quite reach to the end of the board. If you were going to be a little bit particular, you might want to be able to repeat that pattern down there just to grab the very ends of those tips. But I think it'll look fine just as it is. You can imagine this with a, a dark background on the board too, and then having white as the, the shapes, the diamond shapes, and so many different fun ideas for using this pattern. Oop. Diana says we make this look so easy. Well we've been practicing for quite a number of years so if you are new to stenciling I encourage you to practice on a piece of cardboard or something before and I, and I think that as ambassadors we tend to rush because we're doing it live and we don't want you to sit there watching us, watching paint dry, you know. So <laughs> there are some times, like I painted this board earlier so that we didn't have to wait for that part. But um, yes, I feel like I try and rush a bit so that we're not sitting around twiddling our thumbs while we're watching. But I hope you're crafting. Some people love to craft while, we're, while they're watching us live here. Okay, so this may need a second coat, so we'll just see. Let's have a peek. Who wants to have a look? Let's see how it works out. Um, all right, so and then I will have to line that up somehow as well. Okie doke. Oh, I like it. It's looking great so far. Let me hold that up so we can see it a little better. Can you see that? Looking very cool. So I won't do the second coat um, now on my live. I might be able to do that a bit later or I could just leave it. I think it still looks great. So just moving this across a little now so we can line up. So all I'm going to do is line up those crisscrosses on this side, hopefully to where there's at least one that's crisscrossing so I can get some more on this side. Okay, yes. So I can see the lines crisscrossing here, making sure I've got those all exactly lined up. So then I can do and tape that down, hold it tight and do these ones on this side where my little patch is. So I can get those working. Okay. And then imagine all the different Christmas signs that you could put on this top section here. Christmas signage. Um, there's a beautiful stocking sign too in the Christmas bundle if you haven't seen that already. Something about where all the stockings hang. Be a great one for above the mantle. Okay, let's see. Yep. That side done. This side, line it up around about. Yeah. It is tricky, but it's important to kind of get it to get it lined up exactly so that our other section, and that's kind of lifting a bit, so you might want to put something laying down there. Um, where are we going? I think I have to move it over this way so you can see a bit better. Okay, so there's my bits that are lined up right there. It shifted and I've got to get these bits lined up. Don't forget to leave. If you've got any questions, um, let me know in the comments. And I do love to go back and answer them afterwards. <coughs> yeah, these patterns are great, not just for Christmas time. So these are kind of an all year round, really. They are a great wintertime pattern because, you know, you see them on those, they remind me of those um, vintage vests, you know, or you could make a, a 
Christmas t-shirt with this pattern on. That'd be fun. The Christmas theme. Think we've got it all, guys. Think we've got it all. Da -da -da. So there is our two-part set for the Argyle pattern. I love it. Oh, you guys, I'm really happy with that. I think that turned out great. So like I said, you could use any colour there. I used this colour, Vintage Gold, Vision Mineral Paints Vintage Gold. Um, and then I may even use that for something at the top here that I'm going to do next using the Seasons Greetings stencil set. I showed this at the beginning. We've got the Seasons Greetings, which I'll pop, pop up here. We've got, um, my favorite color is Christmas Lights. That's a fun stencil. So this is in the three pack. Um, and the Joyful, Merry and Blessed. So that is in that three pack set. And I was looking for a plastic bag or just even a wet cloth sometimes is good to just pop your brush in if you're going to use it again later. So I'm thinking I could use that metallic somewhere here. So we're going to add season's greetings. Obviously this one's got Christmas trees down the bottom. I might just take my tape off now because I can, you know, put my sign wherever it needs to be. And really this tape was just a guide. I didn't really go across the tape, but it still taped off those little bits. Um, but those points come right to the end of the tape, so I just lined it up with that. So now I may use some of that tape as I'm doing my, because I'm not going to add the Christmas trees, I just want these words, Seasons Greetings, to be kind of centred there. And I think I'll do those in black. Could even use that black or the gold as a bit of a shadow. <clears throat> I don't mind these snowflakes. In fact, I might put some snowflakes around the outside of it and tape some off. Let's pop this here. I'm just trying to see if the words are going to be lined up in the, about the centre. There we go. One bit there. One bit here. And I'll use the black and then we can just add a bit of gold to add some bling. This is coal black, Fusions coal black. It's just a nice true black finish, but you can use, like we say, any acrylic or water-based paints. I prefer water-based because they're such, so much easier to clean up and easier to clean your stencils with. Adding, <coughs> we've got all the links for um, the products that I'm using today, all of those are on the description of the live um, and also some of Essential Stencils uh, posts in the comments, they're, they're putting them there. Now I don't think I want to do black on some of these snowflakes, I feel like they need to be gold or something. Okay, so I might just, if there's any close, I might just tape them, but I think, I think we're good. Some of these little Oh, it's seasons. That's the apostrophe. I was thinking it was a little snowflake dot, but it's the apostrophe. <laughs> I better not forget that. And then we've got some of the snowflakes and, sn I don't know, snowdrops maybe? I don't know. We'll, we, we'll paint them gold. Okay, starting around here again, we're using that swirling motion. Now, I can see right now that I don't have enough paint on my brush. So it's not covering as well as I'd like. I'm going to add a little bit more, but I'm still going to offload it onto my cardboard. I might even, there's still too much, I might even wipe that slightly on the side of the jar. And then work that into the bristles. And then it makes it a little bit easier to swirl around. a bit of fluff there or something dragging. Okay, adding a bit more and away we go again. So we're just slight swirling motion and then I'm going to go over the snowflakes with that 
gold. Could even use this as a bit of a shadow. All right, who's feeling a little bit more confident about stenciling today after seeing and hearing about some of the techniques that you can use, after you're going to practice? We'd love to know. I know that everybody in the comments is always just so encouraging. I love you guys, honestly. <laughs> you're some of the best um, encouragers around the internet, you know, because um, <laughs> there is some places you go that there's not so much encouragement and love. I just feel like there's such a, a lovely love in this community. All right, so we've got that done. It kind of feels like it's not hugely, um, you know, it's not like totally covered. I'll show you that up close. You can kind of see it's a little bit rough. I'm going to take it off now, but we might use this as a bit of a shadow. Season's Greetings is at the top there. But I think we need to use some gold bling. So I might use that same vintage gold that I've used down here. Whoops, it's got a little blob there for that argyle pattern. And we might um, go over that a bit. Now, I'm not, for the sake of time, I'm not going to clean this off. But I will dry this just to make sure it's fairly dry. <laughs> Yeah, Tracy, I agree. Swirling's what I, I like that method best. Um, I used to not do that. I used to kind of stipple the brush going up and down, but I found like you got a, a few more little, um, sort of it became a bit more dotty, you know, that you could see the results there. But when you just have, it, it does take a bit of practice to get the right amount on your brush. When you have just the right amount on your brush, um, you can feel the difference that it's, um, it's covering more. In there. So I'm going to use this vintage gold again. Get ready. I think we will shadow this. We will take our uh, tape off the snowflakes. We'll take that off because we want to add our snowflakes in there now. So with shadowing again, I did this last week, um, is you put that exactly on the spot where you stenciled. Then you just shift it slightly up, slightly across. So that's all I'm going to do. And it might just be such a slight bit of shadowing. And we're probably still going to see some black in there. It's just kind of going to be a bit of a mixture. So we'll see. We'll see what it turns out like. We're experimenting as always. Hi Rosanna. Thanks for joining us. It doesn't matter you're late. We can always watch the replay, can't we, if you missed some bits and how to do this lovely argyle pattern down the bottom here. Um, yeah, we'll add some gold. Let me do some... Uh, some of these snowflakes first, or snow dots, <laughs> snow sparkles. And this little snowflake down here. Yeah, probably I'll do these before I get my brush on that black around the edges. If you were doing this, I would suggest cleaning off your stencil first because you may get some extra. It, it may be, maybe make the vintage gold a bit darker, having some of that black in there. Oh, this is going kind of quick, these little snowflakes up here. Some are going off the edge, and I don't mind that. If you wanted to, instead of going off the edge, you could shift the stencil and, and jiggle it around a little bit to make that... Oh, I've got too much on my brush. Whoa, that's a lot. So now I'll have some extra for later. Yeah, you could jiggle it around a bit and shift it forwards, but I'm just going with what is turning up on the board. Now... I will then add a few more snowflakes randomly out here because that part's not filled up. All right, let's see if we can go in. Oop, there's another little dot there and a dot there. Now we'll go in using this extra paint and we'll go over that black. And it won't cover it all. It'll just give it a bit of a shimmer of antique gold over the top of it and it will create, it kind of might even make it look like the gold as the shadow. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we've got some shadowing happening. I'm using vintage gold by Fusion and Oil Paint. It's a metallic. 
paint. You could use any colours. Just as long as, for the shadowing technique anyway, I like to use something that's contrasting, a contrasting colour. I feel like I will see a lot of that black sort of underneath it, but we'll see what it looks like. And then I can always just pop the stencil back down and do a second coat of the vintage gold over the black words, the black lettering. So no dramas. No worries, as I would say here. <coughs> Pat says you love the jiggle around a bit. Yeah, we have lots of different technical terms here for stenciling techniques. There's a smoosh wriggle, a jiggle wriggle, <laughs> stipple, pounce. You could use all these technical terms. It's a bit of fun. Oh, thank you, Sue. You're always so encouraging. Sheila, you did your pre-ordering. Excited to get them. Yes, I know a lot of people are excited to get them. Don't forget, guys, only a few days left, probably about five or six days left for ordering the winter collection as a bundle. Get your pre-orders in and they will start shipping very soon after. I can't remember which day. It's all on the website essentialstencil.com. The links are there to get you to pre-order your winter stencil set, which includes the Argyle stencil and this set. And I just went through the beginning of the live or what all includes, but you can just click on their links and I'll show you all the winter stencils that are available. Amazing bunch of stencils. Um, and then of course, there's the stencil of the month club that I showed you. There's six days left to order to get in on the October um, stencil of the month club. You can use my code I Restore stuff if you're not in the club and, um, and join that for 50% off your first month. So there's that. All right, let's have a look at what that looks like. It's kind of cool. So you can see there's a, um, you may not see in the light, depending on the light, but there's the metallic shimmer over the top of the black. And so I could add a little bit more to that. Let's just... Add a few snowflakes though out on these gaps either side. We've got a couple of little gaps. So let's see if we can just add a snowflake and a couple of dots or, or, or three. <laughs> let's see. A little bit more on the brush. Add a bit of a snowflake. So don't go anywhere because we're going to be giving away some prizes soon on Essential Stencil. There's one there. Add another couple over here. What have we got? Hmm, maybe we'll add some like this. Just adds a little bit more to fill out those edges on the round board. So this board is around about, I think I said, um, 14, 15. 15 or 16 inch board. Last little bit. And then I may even go around the edge of my board because it's raw wood at the moment. I painted the background white, the sides are raw. So I think I might, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I might um, make them, make the sides um, that vintage gold. I think that would look nice too. So there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial today. Don't forget to stay tuned. We're going to pick some winners, but let me just show you what we've done. And up on the back of the screen up here, don't forget the Stencil of the Month Club. Let me just click across if I can to, <clears throat> that's the add-on. But here we've got the Christmas, Merry Christmas words that would look great as a background or a wrapping paper. Snowman, Christmas trees, happy holidays, believe in the magic, Christmas. So much you can do with that sign. And then the add-on is the um, Santa Claus and reindeer. So many things. I'm thinking you could make little kids' masks out of that add-on, you know. Poke out the little eyes. Um, you can make a little reindeer face. I'm not sure how big they are. They're on one of those, the largest size stencils. Let me see. It's a 12 by 16. So it's this size of the stencil. So I'm thinking... That would be like about face size, this Santa Claus and this reindeer, don't you think? I think it looks so cool, so cute as a little face mask. And then um, 
Anyway, that's the add-on, Stencil of the Month Club for October. You've got six days left to jump in on that. Use my code, I restore stuff, and get 50% off your first month for the Stencil of the Month Club. And also, use that same code to get a further 10% off the huge bundle of Christmas stencils available there too. So there's what we did today. I hope you enjoyed that. We've got a white background, the argyle pattern, showed you how to do the little crisscrosses and line them all up for your season's greeting sign. So now we can have a fun way of hanging that. We can add ribbons and all sorts of things. So let's see, our winners today are, I think it's Debbie. Is it Rick or is it Debbie? Is it De Rick Debbie? <laughs> I reckon it's Debbie watching today and Pat and Cindy. So congratulations winners, you have won something from Essential Stencil that they are going to ship to you once you email them with those instructions that are right there. I'm Sharon and I'm from the blog I Restore Stuff, irestorestuff.com or you can just hit at I Restore Stuff on any of the social media platforms. I love to hang out in Instagram at the moment, so but I'm on Pinterest, YouTube and all of the things. So thank you so much for watching today and I look forward to uh, joining you again next week for another fun DIY Live. See you then. Bye.